Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the foreign exchange market. And uh, that's going to be in chapter 34 of your book and the pages that are indicated on the screen. And what we're going to talk about is first, what is an exchange rate? And explain um, the role that the exchange rate plays in the foreign exchange market. And we'll identify uh, how, to, how to tell when a currency appreciates or depreciates in value relative to other currencies. And we'll use some of this information to be able to predict the impact of exchange rates on both our current and capital accounts. So let's go ahead and get started by talking first about um, the exchange rate. When you want to go to a place like Chuck E. Cheese when you were a kid uh, and you wanted to play video games, what would you need to play? Um, because the machines don't take regular money, you'd need to be able to convert your dollars into tokens. Um, and so essentially you're going from one currency, the dollar, to a different currency, the token. And so if I told you um, that one dollar used to be able to buy four tokens but now can buy eight tokens or ten, then um, what that would tell us is that the dollar has appreciated in value. One dollar can buy more of the other currency than it could before. And if one dollar used to be able to buy four tokens but now can only buy two tokens, then we would say then that the dollar has depreciated in value. It can buy fewer of the other currency than it could before. And so when we see uh, the dollar appreciate, it means that your imports will be able to rise because um, your dollar can buy more stuff from another country than it could before. So you'll buy more things from the other country uh, that you're trading with than you could before. And then when your dollar depreciates, your imports will fall or your net exports will rise because you can't buy as much stuff in other countries. Um, and so you won't be importing as many goods. Or looked at a different way, people in the other country, their dollar or their currency is worth more now than it was before relative to yours. So they'll be buying more of your goods and, um, and, and so your, your net exports will rise. And so um, let's just take a look and see uh, how to calculate the value of goods based on the exchange rate. Let's pretend that for some reason um, you feel inspired to buy a Mexican baseball shirt from the World Series of Baseball and that Mexican shirt costs 187.5 pesos to purchase. Uh, in order to buy that peso denominated good, I need to take the dollars I own and switch them over and convert them to pesos. That's where we get into the exchange rate. So I'd have to go to the foreign exchange market where they're buying and selling currencies from different countries and there is a price for each of the different currencies and that's what's called the exchange rate. And that exchange rate will change on a daily basis depending on the market demand or market supply of um, one currency or the other. So let's just pretend for a minute that um, the exchange rate for pesos to dollars is 12.99 pesos per dollar. So if I want to know how much this Mexican baseball t-shirt is going to cost me in American dollars, I take the peso price, 187.5, and divide it by the currency exchange rate, which is 12.99 pesos. And when you do that, if you're going to uh, eliminate your signs, the pesos cancel out, and that'll then tell us how much this good is worth in dollar terms. And we'll find that it's worth $14.43. And we could look at the same shirt uh, at 187.5 pesos for the shirt and say what happens to the price in American dollars if the exchange rate changes from 12.99 uh, pesos to 12.1 pesos. And so if we were to have that change in exchange rate, we would see that now that same shirt at the same peso price is now worth $15.50 in American dollars. And so what we see here then is that when the peso rate changed from 12.99 to 12.1, that the American dollar has depreciated in value relative to the Mexican peso. One American dollar cannot buy as many pesos um, now as it could before. Or put a different way, the, um, the Mexican shirt, whose Mexican price hasn't changed at 187.5 pesos, now costs more American dollars to buy. So my dollar can't buy as much as it used to be able to buy before, so it's depreciated in value. And at the same time, the Mexican peso has appreciated in value. It's now worth more. Um, you know, essentially, Mexican pesos can buy more dollars than they could before. 
And so the Mexican dollar or Mexican peso is, um, is worth more, its value has appreciated. And now what we want to do is look at it from a graph perspective. Um, if you're to graph the foreign exchange market for the US dollar relative to the euro, for example, this is what it would look like. We would put the quantity of US dollars on the horizontal axis and we would put the exchange rate on the vertical axis. There'd then be a supply of dollars being offered for exchange in the foreign exchange market and a demand for US dollars in the foreign exchange market. And where they intersect then is the uh, equilibrium price and quantity of US dollars um, in exchange for euros. And what we'll see is that the equilibrium price and quantity will change depending on whether there are shifts in uh, demand or supply of US dollars, at least in this example. And so for example, uh, we might see that the demand for US dollars increases uh, because people in other parts of the world with other currencies have an interest in acquiring more US dollars than they had before, in which case we would see an increase in quantity and an increase in the equilibrium price um, of the dollar. Or it could shift uh, to the left instead and see a decrease in both the exchange rate and the quantity of the US dollar if for some reason people didn't want the US dollar as much as they had in the past for whatever reason. Um, in the same way with supply could be possible that people in the United States who are holding US dollars want to get out of the US dollar and into a different currency so they'll increase the amount of dollars that they have available in the market to uh, to exchange and that would cause supply to increase and cause a decrease in the exchange rate or there could be a decrease in supply um, because people don't want to give up their dollars and, and are willing to supply even fewer dollars than before in the foreign exchange market, in which case we would see uh, an increase in the exchange rate and decrease in the quantity supplied. When it comes to graphing the foreign exchange market, uh, especially if it's a question that's on the AP exam, you need to make sure that you get the right label for the vertical axis, and that comes with getting the exchange rate correct. And so the general rule here is what goes below goes below. So whatever the horizontal axis is, whatever the market is, whatever the currency of that market is, in this case the US dollar, is going to be um, the bottom part of the exchange rate ratio. So in the foreign exchange market, four dollars, we've got the quantity of US dollars along the bottom, and then the exchange rate is whatever the foreign exchange is that is interested in being converted into dollars over dollars. So what goes below goes below. And then let's take a quick look at an example of how this would work. Um, when we're talking about foreign exchange and comparing one currency to the other, it's, it's very helpful um, if you're to put the two currencies in a side-by-side -side graph. So in this example, we've got pesos and US dollars. So we've got quantity of pesos along the horizontal uh, on the left and quantity of US dollars on uh, the right. And then the uh, vertical axis in both is the exchange rate. So this would be uh, pesos dollars per peso and then on the US market it would be pesos per dollar because again what goes on the bottom goes on the bottom and so we might have an example where um, we'll pretend that Mexican consumers have more money to spend um, more real income than they had before if they have more real income than they had before, that means they can purchase more goods, both foreign and domestic. So if they're going to be buying more foreign goods than um, more U.S. goods, then shoppers in Mexico need to convert their pesos into U.S. dollars. So they were already converting some pesos into dollars as it is, but now they're going to take some of their pesos that were not in the foreign exchange market and increase uh, the amount of pesos total that are in the foreign exchange market by shifting their supply curve to the right, which is going to cause the Mexican peso to depreciate relative to the U.S. dollar. And when they are shifting out of the peso and into the U.S. currency, that means that the demand for U.S. dollars is now greater than it was before. So there will be a right shift in the demand for U.S. dollars causing the U.S. currency to appreciate relative to the peso. As a result of the change in relative values of currencies between the dollar and the peso, then we would see 
um, that because the U.S. dollar has appreciated, that would have a negative effect on U.S. exports. The net exports for the U.S. will begin to diminish or decrease um, because U.S. goods are now relatively more expensive for foreigners to purchase than there was before. In this case, it's going to take more pesos to purchase U.S. dollars than it did before because the U.S. dollar appreciated, which means that um, every U.S. good is now relatively more expensive than it was before, which means that um, fewer U.S. goods will be purchased uh, by Mexican shoppers than were in the past. We're going to have some more practice with uh, the foreign exchange market, both calculating the foreign exchange rate and the relative price of goods, as well as uh, graphing the foreign exchange market when I see you in class. See you then.